How's it going everyone? In this video, we are gonna be going over different ways we could pipe data to our components. I was recently reviewing one of my projects I created a few years back, and I was kind of horrified the way I was manipulating data and outputting it to the components. So I just wanna show you some bad examples and some really good examples in this video. If we check out our example project here, and I called it piping data, and here we have four different examples. And each of these examples from within the browser are doing the exact same thing. We get an array of letters. These letters come in as lowercase. And what we do is we transform this data. So it's kind of like when you make an API call, you get back a bunch of data. You need to change it in some way, transform it in some way. So in this case, we're transforming our lowercase letters to uppercase. That's one change we're making. And then when the user clicks on this button here, we transform the array by removing some letters from it. And that's what we do here. So we're changing the state. And by the way, this is the bad example. I'll show you better ways of doing this in later examples. And then we make another API call. Again, this is a bad, bad way of doing it to get a new letters array because we just manipulated our letter state. So we now we gotta get out and get a fresh array of letters. So this is the bad example. And then later on, I'll show you better ways. So here we're doing the exact same thing. Example three, exact same thing, but the code is totally different from within the TS files. So let's check out the code. Inside of our project, you'll find all those examples within the examples module. So example one, that's the bad code. And that is this right here. Then example two is component two. So if we go back here, and that is example two. So that's the way I set that up. And if we go and check out the bad code first, so we'll start with that, open up the HTML. And the HTML inside all these components, like example four, example one, uh, each of these components are pretty much the same. We, there's slight changes to it, but the HTML is pretty much the same. We got a couple buttons. Then here we're displaying each of our letters using the ng4 directive. So we do the HTML pretty much the same. And that goes for all four components. Now the TS files are what's really different. So open up the example one TS file and we'll review that first. So we'll jump inside the TS file and we'll start at the top and work our way down. So here is our letters array. And that is what we're showing right here with our ng4 directive right here is the letters. So we have it connected that way. And how we're setting this letters array is we call our letter service and we have a method called get letters. And if we check out that service, so I'll click on it, hit F12, and we're calling this method right here. So we're not really making a real API call, but normally like when you make an HTTP call, you get back an observable. So I just wanted a method that would give me back a observable of letters array. And how I'm doing that is I got this mock data here. I just return that as an observable, that's it. So that's the method that we're calling from within our component. So we go back here and we call the get letters method and that is this. Then we call the get letters from our service. We immediately subscribe to it. And here is our first flaw right here. What we're doing is as soon as we get the data from our API, we manipulate it, we change it. And what we're doing is we're setting all the letters from lowercase to uppercase. And we use this method, and this method is a bad way of doing it because we could use a Angular pipe instead of setting up all this code within our components. And we'll check that out in example two. So this is a very bad example right here. So we're manipulating our state right away. We're not making a copy of it or anything like that. And then we're using methods instead of using the Angular pipes that Angular gives us. So that's another bad example. And also, you don't always have to subscribe to an observable right away. You can use like what's called a pre-built Angular async pipe to subscribe to it for us. And we'll check that out in example two as well. So here is how we're getting our letters. Then here's another bad example, limit letters. So what we do is we manipulate our state by removing letters from our array. So what happens if the user wants another array of letters? Well, we need to go make another API call. The reason is, is we changed the original letter state. So now we're not able to get the letters from our in-memory storage anymore. We've got to make an API call every time the user wants letters. 
So this is a very bad way of doing it as well. Also, we can handle this by using custom built angler pipes. And I'll show you that in example two as well. Then this, we don't even need this method within this component. So we can get rid of that. And I'll show you that soon as well. So let's compare this file to example one. I'll close the service down and let's open up example two. So I'll open up the HTML here, the HTML and the TS files. So let's open up both of them. And let's start inside the example two TS file. And like we did before, we'll start at the top and work our way down. So you'll notice a difference right away. Like right here now, what we're storing is an observable of letters array instead of just the letters array. And how we're setting that is very similar to like we did before. We call the get letters. We have that method here for that. Call our service, but instead of subscribing to it right away, we just store it right in here without subscribing to it. We're going to use the Angular pre-built pipe, the async pipe to subscribe to it for us. And I'll show you that in the HTML in a second. But what about your side effects? Well, you just use the pipe and then you could use the tap operator to handle your side effects for you. Now you might be asking, well, wait a second, didn't you convert all your letters to uppercase? Like where is that method at? And if we go back to example one TS file, like right here, like how are you going to convert all your letters to uppercase? Well, we're going to use Angular pre-built pipes to handle that for us. So if we go back to the TS file, so by using those pipes, we can get rid of that method and we don't have to do none of that stuff here. So let's check out the HTML. So we'll jump over to example two HTML. And then here you'll notice a slight difference. Now we're using pre-built Angular pipes to handle converting everything over to uppercase. And we're doing that right here. So you just add on the uh, pipe uppercase. So that should take care of our uppercase. And then here, we create a custom pipe and we set the limit right here. So the limit is inside the TS file. If we go back here and I added that here. So that's another difference. So the user could just set this to whatever they want. And our pipe will do the work for transforming this to the length that we want. Also, you'll notice another, another difference. Here is our letters observable and we're using the async and we're setting the letter. So now we got this letters variable we could use within this container as we want. Now, thanks to all these pipes here, it's really cleaning up our components. We're not doing all this work within our components anymore. And what's nice about this is we could really test these pipes more easily. It breaks our code up a little bit into functions that we could test. If we actually check out that pipe, so I'll go back in here, Go in your resources folder, open up the limit letters pipe. So this is a pipe that I created. And I'll close this down. So here we're doing something very similar to what we did inside of our example one. If we go back here and inside the limit letters, we're doing the exact same thing right here. But the big difference is, is we're not changing our state directly. If we look at the letters up here, so we're not changing this directly anymore we're kind of changing our letters array on the fly. If we look at the example two component, we're not changing this anymore. So our state is staying the same. So we could reuse this letters as much as we want to get a full array of letters without making API calls. So just keep in mind, you could always move a lot of your work out into pipes instead of adding it within your components. Now let's look at example three. Example three is very similar to example two, but what we're doing is we're moving our state out into the service to make it more reusable. So let's check that out. I'm gonna close everything down and open up example three. And that is inside of here. And close this back down. And the big difference within this file is when we call our service, we use the map operator and we update the letter state inside of our service. So that's the big difference within this file. And what is nice about this is if we go inside of our letter service and whenever we update our letter state, we now have this letters observable and anybody that uses this letter service could just get access to the letter state 
without calling the API every time you want access to the letter state from other components. So this will save you from making extra API calls. So now let's check out example four. So example four, we use NGRX. So I'll close everything down again. And we'll open up example four. And that's inside here. And then in here, we have a big difference now. Now inside the constructor, we're not pulling in a bunch of services. All we're doing is pulling in our NGRX store. If you're interested in learning more about NGRX, if you're new to NGRX, I have a whole entire NGRX course on my channel, so you can find that there. But here we're setting this letters now from whatever we get from here. So we do a check using a selector to see if our letters are in the store. If they are in the store, then we just select the letters from the store. But if they're not, then we dispatch an action and we call our API to get the letters and put it in the store. Then we select the letters from the store. So this again, saves you from making a bunch of API calls. And also it moves all your services from your constructor. And then in this case, all I need to do is pull in one store and our alert system and everything will work just the same. If you would like to check out the NGRX files, that is here. I won't go too in depth on NGRX in this video. And the reason is I have a full course if you wanna learn more about that, but I'll just show you these files, show you what they look like. So here are the actions. So I have a load letters, load letter success. And when we successfully get some letters from the back end, we put the letters in the store. So we pass that in here. And of course we handle any failures. That's our actions. And there's our effects. So this is our API effect that calls load in the letters. Our reducer. So whenever we do get letters, we put it in our store. And here we're storing it right here. And then our selector. So here we got two. So if the letters are in the store, we get back a Boolean for that, true or false. And then here actually gives us the letters from the store if the letters are in the store. So now you're probably wondering, well, where's the side effect for the alert system? Well, that is right here in the global store. We have the effects and this is listening for this action. Whenever that action gets hit, we fire off this as the alert. What's nice about this, this really cleans up your components. I was working inside of a component where there was like a couple hundred lines of code. And by the time I got done refactoring it, it was down to like 50 lines of code and it really cleans everything up, but it moves a lot of the code out into your, your NGRX files, into your pipes, and it breaks your code down into more modular, manageable pieces. Let's go into the browser and check out the dev tools to see our store. Back here in the browser, if we open up our dev tools, and I show you how to set up this Redux in, in the course, but this is how we can see the state within our dev tools. So you notice we're not dispatching any actions for loading letters, so let's do that. So we currently have no letters within our store. And to double check that, you just click on the state. And as you can see here, we have our letter state. We have nothing in our array. So let's click on this. This should dispatch an action. So I click on that, and there's no letters in our store, so it dispatched this action. And we successfully got a list of letters. And if we look at our current state inside of our store, we now have all these letters in our store. And you'll notice all these letters are lowercase, so we don't do nothing to the letters. We just grab the letters that we're getting from the API, and we just drop it right in our store. We don't manipulate it. We don't change it in any way. We let all of our pipes do all that work. And the reason I like to let the pipes do all the work is this makes this letters array more reusable for any other components that want to use this letters array. If you pollute this letters array, you will pollute it for everybody else that wants to use this state, this letters array. Now, if we click on five, everything works just fine. Our pipes are doing their work. We click on this again, it won't go out and call the API again because we already have the letters within the store. So you'll notice we don't even dispatch the action again. And that is different ways you could pipe data to your components.